Mm. Delicious. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first ever Aaron Films product review, and today we are talking about the Yong New, Yong, Yong New, Yong No, Yong Now, 50 millimeter f1.8 prime lens, and how great of an image you can get for not very much money. So let's get started. In my opinion, a 50 millimeter lens is a lens that every photographer and videographer should have in their gear bag. First thing I wanna talk about is the physical aspects of this lens. So this particular lens is a clone or copy of a very popular 50 millimeter lens made by Canon, commonly referred to as the Nifty 50. This is a cheap lens, but to be honest, it doesn't feel like one. My particular lens that I've got here is for the Nikon F mount. They do make this lens in a variety of mount styles for different cameras. So be sure to uh, look into it, do your research if you're thinking about getting this lens and make sure that they make one for your particular camera. I'm sure they probably do. So this lens is manufactured uh, with a plastic body. However, uh, it's made very well. Um, there's no like casting marks in it or anything like that from the plastic mold. Um, or if there is, it's very small and I can't find it. Um, the contours on the lens and everything are very good. It's got a good amount of weight to it, but it's not overly heavy. Um, I don't know exactly how much it weighs. I'm sure that information's out there somewhere, but I didn't weigh it for the purposes of this review. Um, but overall, the build quality, the construction of this is really nice. And I was pleasantly surprised when I um, unbox this. I have had this lens now for a few months and I wanted to kind of utilize it for what I do and put it through its paces for me um, before I gave my opinion or did a review on it. So I was surprised to see a metal lens mount attached to the plastic body of this particular lens. Um, when I first was unboxing this and checking it out uh, before I pulled the cover off of it, I didn't realize that it had a metal lens mount <clears throat> and I was kind of disappointed at first because I thought it had a plastic lens mount. Um, but I was really happy to see that it's got a metal lens mount which is really nice. Um, it fits very nicely on my camera, it snaps right in like it should, fits just as well as a factory Nikon lens. Um, and uh, yeah, so I was, I was pleasantly surprised by that. Now, this lens uses a 58 millimeter front thread, which is really nice. That's a fairly standard size for a lot of lenses. Um, you can find things uh, like ND filters, circular polarizers, lens hoods, etc., that fit the 58 millimeter front thread pitch. And I would highly recommend you guys use ND filters, especially when you're outside filming or taking uh, photos in a bright environment. That sounds like it might be a good idea for another product review video. Drop a comment, let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing a product review on ND filters. So this lens is a prime lens, which means it has a fixed focal length. You cannot zoom in or out with this lens, which means you need to be more aware of how you're setting up your shots and your surroundings of where you're filming. There are pros and cons to a prime lens. Obviously, the number one main con is that you cannot adjust the focal length by zooming in or out like you can on a zoom lens. However, prime lenses generally perform better because they are optimized for their specific focal length. Another pro is that they usually have a much wider aperture, which means they allow more light in. This is commonly referred to as a lens being fast or having a fast aperture. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. One other thing you need to be aware of with any lens that you're choosing to use on your camera is the sensor size of your camera. If it's a full frame camera, then the advertised focal length of the lens is what you're gonna get. However, if it's a crop sensor like an APS-C sensor, then you're gonna have to do some math to figure out what your exact focal length will be utilizing that different lens on your existing camera body. I left a link down there in the description so you can learn a little bit more about sensor sizes and how they affect your focal length. In my case, I have to multiply the focal length of this lens by 1.5 for my camera, which means that for me this is about a 75 millimeter fixed focal length lens, which is one of the reasons why I like it so much for B-roll. Here's some examples.
Now that we've talked about focal length, let's discuss that aperture thingy that I talked about previously. So one thing that I really like about this lens is that it has a seven blade aperture. What does that mean exactly? So the aperture is very much like the iris of your eye. It is what controls how much light enters the lens. In this particular case, this lens has an aperture range from f1.8, which is full wide open like you see right here, down to f22. Now, having seven blades in the aperture is pretty good. Some lenses have less and some lenses have more. One advantage to having more blades in your aperture is that it will give you a really nice bokeh in your images. Bokeh. Bokeh. Bo bokeh. I think I'm pronouncing that right. What is bokeh, you may ask? Uh, bokeh is a Japanese term that basically just means blur or haze, and that is kind of what you'll see behind your subject with a shallow depth of field image. You'll have that nice haze back there. You might have some little lens flare dots, that sort of thing. That is what is referred to as bokeh. I've also left a link for bokeh down in the description so you can learn a little bit more about that as well. So this lens also has built-in autofocus, which is really nice. However, I wish it was a little bit faster and a little bit quieter. The built-in autofocus motor on this lens is a little bit noisy. Of course, it also has the option of doing manual focus as well, which is just a simple switch over to the MF setting on the lens. The focus ring on this lens is really smooth and in my opinion has a pretty nice amount of drag to it. It's uh, very smooth to operate, it's not grindy or crunchy or anything like that. Um, I have heard some horror stories of some other, uh, you know, knockoff or clone replica type lenses where the focus ring is like noticeably kind of grindy. That is not the case at all with this lens. It's actually very, very smooth and I, uh, I like it a lot. It also has a pretty nice, uh, easy to read focus window on it if you like to use that. So one of the reasons that I personally like to use a 50 millimeter lens for the work that I do is because it's very similar to how the human eye sees. However, it can be challenging to work with in some situations because it doesn't give you as wide of a field of view as some lenses do, and you also don't have the ability to zoom in or out and change your field of view since it is a fixed focal length lens. The other tricky aspect of working with a lens like this is that aperture thingy we talked about a little bit earlier. While having a lens with an aperture that you can stop down to f1.8 is great for letting in in a lot of light, it makes it more difficult to focus on your subject with a shallow depth of field that comes with a fast aperture on a lens like this, especially in moving situations like filming video. So I know that this was part uh, product review and kind of part technical overview of uh, some different terminology associated with lenses like this, um, so I will wrap up the video by saying this. Overall, for the money, this is a fantastic lens and I would definitely recommend picking one up uh, for anybody who is wanting to experiment with a prime lens or specifically a 50 millimeter lens with an f1.8 aperture um, who's on a budget like myself. I think you can pick these up on Amazon for like anywhere from 60 to 80 bucks, somewhere in that range is what I paid for mine. And for that little money for a lens, I'm really impressed. The overall build quality on it is very nice uh, and the images that I've been able to get with this lens have been really nice and that's what's most important is the overall image quality. So thank you for hanging out. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. So please remember to subscribe, hit that like button, share the video if there's somebody out there you think might like it as well, and also remember to hit that bell for notifications so you know when I put up a new video. Again, thank you for hanging out and we will see you on the next video. Take care.